This lesson is all about how do we make decisions using multiple regression. So we have already learned about how we interpret the information, how we look at the tables, how we start the problem solving. So this is really what does the problem solving look like? So we have all of this already done. If you do not know how to interpret this, then look at a different video. And we already have talked about the housing data set. So there is a video to watch about multiple regression in Excel that you should know before you go to this one. So if you are not meeting assumptions, that is the first thing that you have to test and we have to fix it. Probably if we get rid of outliers, it will fix the problem. Otherwise, we're going to transform the variable and we cannot move on until we meet assumptions. <clears throat> If we are still violating, then we have to remove that entire variable from the analysis. If we have missing data, so for multiple regression to work, we have to have every single cell filled in for every observation and every variable. So if we have missing this on a few observations, so if we were looking at the housing data, then one house was missing. We didn't know if it had a garage or not. We can't use that entire house. So we would delete that observation, that house from the data. If we had missing this on a variable, so if it was profit that we didn't know the profit on four or five houses or even one house, if most of the data is missing from the column, then we can remove that variable as a whole. If we have to keep the observation, then you try to fill in that cell with the best information that you have. And there's a couple different ways to do that and you can ask me for further instruction if you need to. If we have outliers, we have to decide are they influential or not. If they are influential, that means that they are pulling the line towards it and they're messing everything else up. We want to get rid of those. Those are going to make all of our results unreliable. What you can do <coughs> is run regression with and without them to explore their effects on the results. So you run a whole regression and you note everything about it and then you run another regression without that outlier and then you see the results and you compare them. So is the R squared drastically different or all the predictors drastically different? What's happening to the model as a whole? If it's not a huge change, then you can rational or you can rationalize keeping them. If it is a huge change, then they are influential and you need to get rid of them. And regardless of your decision, you have to discuss this in your write-up. So we had outliers, we don't have outliers. If you do have outliers, what'd you do with them? And again, this is how you talk about it. Keep in mind that regression is trying to predict based on the norm. So based on most people are acting in this manner and they are trying, regression is trying to predict based on that. If you have outliers, then they are already not acting like the norm. And so they're not helping you. Typically, get rid of them. Transformation. If you have to transform a variable, you kind of have three choices. You can square it, you can cube it, you can square root it. If you transform it, then you replace the old variable with this new transformed one, rerun the regression, test the assumptions, and you see what happens. If the graph is now fixed, so if the plot looks like you wanted to, great, then we're going to use that one, the new transformed one, forever. If squaring the variable doesn't fix the problem, then try a different one. Try cubing it. If that doesn't fix it, try square rooting it. If that doesn't fix it, then we have to get rid of that variable completely. We don't want non-significant predictors. So if we run a regression that has 10 predictors, we cannot just use those coefficients and write a regression line. So we cannot insert those values for B0, B1, B2. Instead, we have to drop one at a time each non-significant predictor and rerun the regression. This is important because everything is interacting as correlations between everything that you have in there. So if you remove one thing, the data set has just changed. So we have to rerun the regression. 
Keeping non-significant predictors increases our chance for error, type 1 and even type 2. Because we are explaining part of the dependent variable, part of our y, by chance. We are not significantly explaining it. We are explaining it by chance. I don't like chance. <laughs> if we have multicollinearity, so we have two predictors that are highly correlated to each other. We can run the model to start with with both of them. If they are both not significant, then delete one and leave one of them in. If it is also not significant, then remove them both and you're done. But we want to try with both of them because it's possible that the interaction between those two predictors is making them both be not significant. It is very possible that deleting one of them could make the other one significant. On the flip side, if both of your predictors are significant, then again, remove one and see what happens to the R squared and to the other predictors. Make a note of all of that. Put that one back in and remove the other one. And note the same thing. So this is kind of what we did with the outliers. So we're running two models and seeing what the difference is. If there's a huge difference keeping only one of them versus both of them, then get rid of it. If there's not a huge difference by putting them both in the model, then that is rationale for keeping both of them together. And again, you discuss if you have multicollinearity, you better be telling me about it in the writing. F test versus T test. So we've talked about this before. If the F test is significant, meaning your model is significant, but none of the predictors is. This is a collinearity issue. If the model is not significant, do we still go further? And it really depends. So again, we talked about this. If you have really good predictors and you have a theory, some rationale for why it should be good, then I would look at the the significance test of your T and see how close you are to significance. It might be that if you collect more data, then you would find significance. You just didn't have enough for the regression to be able to find the difference. If you've just picked a lot of random things and you have no prior theories or rationale for why they would be significant anyway, then I would look at the model as a whole and say nope and nope, not move on. This is going to happen to some of you. You're going to start with 10 predictors and you're going to find out that nothing is significant. In that case, what do you do? If you have none of your predictors that are explaining your dependent variable, your y, then the best explanation of y, the best predictor of y in that case, is the mean. So the mean value, the average of y, is your best predictor if you don't have anything that is significant. FYI, that's going to be on your final. Keep in mind that the r squared value in multiple regression is the variance explained by the combination of x. We don't know individual, combina individual contributions. This is the combination of the three predictors that you have in the model and how much those three combined are explaining why. And keep in mind that also gives us the unexplained variance. So if I'm explaining 40%, I'm not explaining 60%. Your goal in regression is two things. You want to explain the most variance of y which is the highest R squared that you can find. So you want the highest R squared that includes the most significant predictors. Preferably they're all significant, but if you want to include a non-significant one because of multicollinearity issues, then you can rationalize that. Preferably all significant predictors with the highest R squared. Here's your steps again. Start with descriptives. So is everything normally distributed? Do we have outliers? Do we have collinearity issues? What are the correlations between the IV and the DV? We're gonna test all the assumptions. So we throw in all the variables and we test assumptions for each one. 
We check for collinearity issues and we make those decisions. We check for outliers, we make those decisions. We check all of our models. Then we check our predictors. We decide which predictors to keep, which ones to remove, and we rerun it every time. When we finally have our final model, that is when we write our regression line. So y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2, etc. And then, of course, we have to interpret what the heck does that mean? <laughs> so if we look at the housing data, our final two predictors were ceiling height and bedrooms. So if I want to get the biggest profit, or if I want to have the best prediction of profit if I'm flipping houses, then I probably want to look for houses that have high ceilings and a lot of bedrooms. That's how I'm going to use and interpret the information. That does not, that is not cause and effect. That means if I focus on these two, I can predict and I have a better influence potentially. Um, there is a strong relationship between those variables and my Y value. There are some examples of how to write the things up, but it really comes down to you start with describing each individual variable. So what were the descriptives? You talk about the correlations that you found, and then you talk about how did you create the model? What were the steps that you went through? And then what results did you have? And for a lot of reports, the results is the key finding. So they're highlighted first and everything else is really in an appendix. Take a minute and I want you to review all of these questions. If you can answer them, you are good to go. Thank you.